Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm glad you can make it. Um, tonight we're going to have Tamara McDuff um, give us a webinar on the business model canvas. But before we start, I just want to go over a couple um, just, I guess, uh, housekeeping sort of things. Uh, we have two interpreters tonight. They are Rachel Green and Byron Beam. Both work at NTID RIT, and they will be interpreting for us. Uh, we also, <clears throat> everybody's cameras and microphones will be muted. If for some reason they're not, please make sure you turn them off. If you hover at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a chat section, a raise hand, and a question and answer Q&A. Uh, all of our questions, if you could direct them into the Q&A, type them in and we will get back, we will get to them throughout the workshop. So if you have any questions at all, type them in there and we'll make sure we take care of that. Um, also at the top of your screen, I believe it's at the top, you can set um, how you can view this. And the best way right now is to do gallery view, especially if you need to see our interpreters that way you can also see the interpreters the presentation and the presenter at the same time there's a bar down the middle of the screen that you can slide to the left or right to adjust how you see the presenter and the interpreters uh, if there's any questions again just type them in the q a and we'll make sure that we address those so then i'd like to i guess move on with the webinar if there's no questions um, i'd like to introduce tamara mcduff She's our presenter tonight. She is the owner of um, Now Digital Marketing, marketing and she is also a uh, score, certified SCORE mentor with our local chapter of Rochester. She trains entrepreneurs and business owners on how to navigate the digital jungle and remain human while doing so. She'll help you increase your impact and influence in your community, all of which sales and customers, driving sales and customers to your door. So I would like to pass this over to Tamara. And again, if you have any questions, please type them in and we'll make sure we take care of those. Thank you very much and enjoy the webinar. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you very much, Kristen. I am Tamara McDuff, like you said, and I will be presenting tonight on the business model canvas. Um, the business model canvas is basically a one page business plan. Uh, it kind of helps you get all of your ideas out of your head and onto a piece of paper. So I can show you all the different sections that make up the business model canvas. And we will include a real life example um, based on a common uh, business, a service business. We base ours, our example is using a cleaning company. So you'll see how those things really get put into the canvas. So first, I would like to begin by um, telling you a little bit about SCORE, for those of you who don't know. SCORE is a national organization. Our chapter has about 80 mentors in it. And we um, mentor ever through every stage of your business from startup to exit strategies and everything in between. We offer free mentoring. It's all done one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, currently, it's done virtually through Zoom, uh, but we do have email mentoring. You can talk to us on the phone uh, and someday we'll get back to face-to-face. -to -face. And that mentoring is free for as long as you need it. We also offer a wide variety of workshops that focus on how to start a business, finance and accounting, how to read your uh, cash flow statements, your financial statements, how to get into government contracting, tax strategies, how to run a nonprofit and more. So that's ways that SCORE can help you in your business and your community. Tonight, we will um, talk about the business model canvas. We'll give you that real world example and we'll do, answer your questions. Like Kristen said, just type them into the Q&A. I will be stopping along the way and uh, be, have giving you some time to answer some questions. And of course, at the end, we'll wrap up. 
There will be a PDF of this presentation and the related templates that will be emailed out to all of the registered attendees, just so that you know. So let's get started. The goal of a business model canvas is to um, define the business model that reflects the key building blocks for your business. This is a foundational step for your business plan. Many businesses jump right into the business plan and not everybody really needs one here at the beginning. So while you're figuring things out, you can use this uh, canvas to do it all on one page. The traditional business plan is 15 to 35 pages or more. It has structured topics um, it, and it, you have the supporting uh, financials. So that means you've done three years worth of uh, tax returns. You have looked at the financials in the, in the industry and it, it does good things for you. It does enforce your discipline thinking it can reveal risks and opportunities, and it shows gaps in your preparedness. But it's typically used only when you're seeking funding, either from a bank, an angel, or a private equity investor. And these organizations typically focus on your numbers, which are necessary for sure, but it really doesn't help you understand how you will be operating your business. And that's where the business model canvas comes in. A business model describes the rationale of how your organization creates, delivers, and captures your value. You can use it to validate your business concept. This can replace or precede your traditional business plan. And the business plan, it's important to note that the business model does not eliminate the need for good basic research. The business model canvas has nine blocks and offers a visual representation of the relationships among the various building blocks of your business. And while it looks simple, it really isn't. And so this is something that you can absolutely work on with your SCORE mentor or your business partner. So what does it do for you? Most importantly, it allows you to uncover and act on the value propositions your customers are expecting. It can identify gaps in your strategy or knowledge. It finds issues early before you spend money and invest time and energy in something that may eventually cause problems. The canvas can be a living document. I recommend that it be a living document. I think business plans in general are living documents because things change. You can add or remove, you can change, you can modify and edit customer segments. If the market has changed, you can react accordingly. You can expand into new markets or you can add products or services. You're always going to get new competitors and new challenges. So it's always a good practice to revisit around every six months or, or once a year. So let's look at the business model canvas's different building blocks. If you focus on the right side, the purple, this is what goes on outside of your business. It focuses on the customer. It focuses on what you need to do to meet the customer's needs and wants and how you might engage with them. The solutions you provide to those needs and wants are your value propositions. So we're gonna start in the center under value propositions, number one, um, because this is what you do. This you need to know inside and out, and it's one of the foundational, fundamental things that a lot of business owners don't do. The value proposition, what do you do? What problem are you solving? What value do you bring to your clients? And it gets into what services that you provide, but essentially this is what sets you apart from your competition. What value are you bringing? What problem do you solve? The left side of the business, or the left side of the business model canvas, focuses on how you do your business and what you need to do your business. Specifically, the most important resources 
and who will help you execute on your value propositions. The bottom section focuses on your business's financials, funding and controlling the costs and expenses and how you will generate income so you can profitably capture the value from your business. All right, so now I have a short video for you to watch. So it really explains everything about the business canvas a little bit more in depth. It's about four minutes long, I believe. I'm gonna play the video and then we'll get into an uh, example using a cleaning company. Mayor, just wanting to check, are there captions on the video? Yes. Wonderful, thank you so much. This is the business model canvas. It's just what Beth and Carl will need to craft a powerful business model, and it can do the same for you. Let's dive in and see how it works. There are nine essential building blocks that make up any business model. When you get all nine blocks working together, you'll have answered the fundamental questions any business model must solve. We'll start here with customer segments. These are all the people or organizations for which you're creating value. For each segment, you have a specific value proposition, these are the bundles of products and services that create value for your customers. Channels describe through which touch points are interacting with customers and delivering value. The customer relationships outline the types of relationships you're establishing with your customers and how you're acquiring and retaining them. Pricing mechanisms through which your business model captures value are documented under revenue streams. The key resources show which assets are indispensable in your business model, so you can describe the infrastructure you need to create, deliver, and capture value. The key activities show which things you need to be able to perform well. The key partners show who can help you leverage your business model, since you won't own all key resources yourself, nor will you perform all key activities. And once you understand your business model's infrastructure, you'll also have an idea of its cost structure. Any business model can be mapped this way. Nine building blocks working to reinforce and strengthen each other. But before you make a model for yourself, it helps to see what a breakthrough business model looks like in action. Like this one. Low-cost airlines revolutionized air travel thanks to their disruptive business model. Let's first look at their value proposition. A low-cost airline offers ultra-cheap flights to their main customer segment, budget travelers, by adopting a no-frills policy. And this leads to additional revenue streams because customers pay for their ticket and additional fees on items like food and drink, priority boarding and luggage. The airlines save even more money through their choice of channels, selling only through call centers and the internet, making for efficient, if not always convenient, customer relationships that are automated and often impersonal. Okay, that covers the right side of the canvas, the part everyone can see. The left side of the canvas is what's going on backstage. Like their choice of key resources, they reduce maintenance and training costs by using a single aircraft model for the whole fleet. And they only fly to cheap airports where it's cost efficient to land or where they even get paid to touch down. Planes that do land have quick turnarounds so they get back in the air earning money as quickly as possible. And they form key partnerships with others in the travel industry like car rental, hotel and insurance companies. Finally, under cost structures, all maintenance, training, airport and call center costs are trimmed to their lowest levels. All of these pieces working together make their fares almost impossible for traditional airlines to compete with. There's nothing superior about these airlines except their business models. They're reaching an entirely new segment of travelers out of reach for traditional airlines. Hmm. Cutting out costs is pretty exciting, right? But wait, just because it's successful for discount airlines doesn't mean it will work for your idea. Luckily, the business model canvas allows you to iterate many models and test them quickly. Let's get started with your own business idea. Okay. So before I go, I, I don't usually stop here, but we can, um, does anybody have any questions about the overall before we dive in with the example? We don't have anything specific. Sorry, this is Kristen. Mm -hmm. I don't have any specific questions at this time. Okay, then we'll proceed with the example and I'll stop, you know, where we usually do. Okay. 
Okay, this is a business most people are familiar with is a cleaning service. So we're going to use this as our example to take you through the business model canvas. And as we've said before, just if you have any questions, you don't need to wait, just go ahead and type them into the Q&A and I will ask um, for questions and Kristen will give them to me and we'll get them answered for you. There we go. So, we start with understanding what you do or your value proposition. As noted earlier, this and the customer segments are the two most important blocks because everything else depends on them. It's also reasonable to identify who you help or your customer segments and then define their needs and wants as your value propositions. Either way, this is what is going to drive your customer focus. The real questions we need to answer are, what do you do? What value do you deliver to the customer? Which of our customers' problems are we helping to solve? Remember, that's what I had said before, you have to be very clear about what problem do you solve. Then you ask, which customer needs and wants are we satisfying? And what bundles of products and services are we offering to each segment? Understanding your customer's problems, needs, and wants is critical because these words become, for example, the words customers may use for a Google search, and they may be used in your website to support search engine optimization. These words might also influence what you call your service or your products and help you to create bundles and packages that might meet your customer's needs and wants. So for a cleaning service, we need most of our customer wants are time saving. They want disinfecting and they want to create a clean and orderly appearance. Some of your customers may even want or need emergency remediation, such as after a flood or a fire. Are there questions on value propositions? Not at this time, sorry. <laughs> that's okay, that's all right. We usually stop after each one, so I'll just, you know, we'll just keep going. All right. Okay, so moving on to the next block, who do you help or for whom are we creating value? Um, a cleaning service can have a variety of customers, but which ones are most important? For example, representing the greatest income with the least cost. So, Customer segments can be defined by consumers or businesses, as we've done here, uh, but also by geography, zip codes, towns, or by business types, such as private practices like dentists or chiropractors. The more you know your customers, the better you can target your value propositions. And the more targeted you are, the more cost-effective your marketing programs will be. In fact, it may help to have different canvases for each customer segment. This would help you to be very targeted in your marketing, messaging, pricing, and products or services, for example. The next block to consider are channels. There we go. The next block to consider are channels. When we talk about you, or how do you find them? Your goal is to be where your customers are, considering all the customer touch points. Which ones, uh, which one of these channels work the best? Which ones are most cost effective? And how do they integrate with your customers' routines? So for our cleaning service, Typically, people are going to find you and you will find them by referrals, through your website, a telephone contact, print advertising, social media, and your business location. You must understand which are the most productive in terms of connections for the cost. Using social media and a website is likely to be less expensive than a storefront or print or other advertising media. And a website for scheduling can be more convenient than having customers call during normal business hours. If referrals are important to you, like in a cleaning business, you might offer existing customers an incentive to make recommendations. 
Some other things you might want to think about other channels are manufacturers who sell through middlemen distributors or local pastry shop who uses Google My Business to connect with nearby customers. Do we have questions about channels or customer segments? Not at this time. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Just want to give everybody the opportunity. Customer relationships. So now we need to think about how you will interact with your customers and create sustainable relationships over time that create value over time. For example, a residential customer may pay each time they are serviced, but may cancel at any time. However, you may benefit from offering a commercial customer a long-term contract. And don't forget that anyone or anything who interacts with your customers is creating a relationship. This starts from the representatives who sign up your customers, who sell your services, to the individuals actually providing the service, your employees, or to the content and user interface on your website. Other examples of relationships might be subscriptions, memberships, blog followers, and email newsletters. The every customer touch point establishes a relationship and an opportunity to create value. Okay, that covers the blocks in the business model canvas that help you create the value. Now we're going to look at how you will deliver the value expressed by your value proposition, starting with your key activities. So for our cleaning, our cleaning service, how do you do it? What key activities do your value propositions require? Your distribution channels, customer relationships, resources and partners, costs and revenue streams. So for our cleaning service, again, we need things like record keeping. We need customers. So you, you're going to need to have an online scheduling or you're going to have to have a, a telephone contact. Contractors, are you going to hire contractors to do your cleaning? Are you going to have employees? You have to figure out the scheduling as well. Equipment and inventory, you have to buy and stock and distribute your inventory, including um, maintenance equipment. So as you think about what needs to be done for in the day to day, consider how these relate to or affect any of the other blocks in your canvas. Examples of other activities might be writing your blog, processing orders and invoices with suppliers, or updating your website. Some of these activities might also include um, going out to networking events to network with other businesses, especially if your cleaning service or your, or your business is going to be a business to business situation. Tamara, we did have one question. Okay. And they were curious if the business campus covered competition. It does not generally, but I believe um, there is a way to go about uh, doing that. And I think we talk about that in a couple of slides. If we don't get to it, I'll make sure I circle back around to it um, at the end. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And no business stands alone. And each business is dependent on a variety of resources to start, run, or grow. Again, consider the other building blocks as you think, think this through. So what resources do you need? What key resources do your value propositions require? What distribution channels, customer relationships, resources, and partners? Other examples of, or, so I'm sorry. So some key resources for the cleaning service, obviously, are our employees. You're going to need trucks to move the equipment and the supplies and your employees to locations. You'll need cleaning machines. You need the chemicals and the cleaning agents. You will need personal protective equipment. And of course, you need business software, something like QuickBooks or Quicken, something to do your bookkeeping, your invoicing, and uh, your uh, your HR, your human resources for your employees, and of course you'll, you'll need the internet. 
Other examples of important resources are an email marketing platform such as MailChimp or Constant Contact, banking lines of credit for periodic cash flow support. These resources are all of the relationships that you develop with people that can help you run your business. As noted previously, you can't go it alone. We just talked about that. So it's essential to anticipate where, who, and how you will get help. Consider partners who will help the cleaning service deliver your value propositions. Who are your key suppliers? Which key resources are we acquiring from our partners? Which key activities do the partners perform? So in our cleaning service, our key partners are contractors, suppliers, web developers, social media experts, lawyers and accountants, and mechanics. And some other examples of people you might partner with are your local banker, affiliate marketing organization, and other professional associations. Do we have any questions on the key partners and resources? No, we do not. Okay. So if you've done your homework and research on how to create and deliver value, now you're ready to anticipate about how you will capture value. And by that, we mean how will you monetize all that you do? You begin by understanding what it will cost to start, run, and grow your business. As is often said, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And most importantly, be sure to keep good records. SCORE has a wonderful set of tools to help with this process. So to start a cleaning services business, you may need to acquire vehicles, equipment, supply. To operate, you're gonna need a payroll company, you'll need insurance, you need fuel for your trucks and equipment, you'll need supplies, you'll need to be able to pay rent, and you need equipment and vehicle maintenance as well. And then to operate the business, you're gonna need those um, resources to pay for those things. So now we need to come up with revenue. So the next block is gonna be all about revenue streams. How much will you make? What are your customers willing to pay for the value delivered? Because remember, you can charge whatever you want for your services. However, you can only charge what the market will bear. So while you do research to figure out what your competition is charging, and you want to land among those numbers, if your target audience, understanding your customers, doesn't, isn't clarified, then you could be leaving money on the table. So make sure you do your research of both what your clients are willing to pay and what the going rate is. And your rate will fall probably somewhere in the middle when you start. Uh, so what, how are your customers currently paying? Do they pay by credit card? Are they invoiced? Um, how do they prefer to pay? Some people prefer to pay online. Some people prefer to pay with a check. A lot of that goes back to defining your customers. Residential customers usually pay very differently than business customers. And how much does each sales stream contribute to overall revenue? Transaction, is it a money per hour, a, a set rate per hour, or is it a set rate per engagement? So in other words, if you're a cleaner, does your, do you charge $25 per hour or $30 per hour, or do you charge a set price for that particular house or office? By contract, do you set up a number of engagements for the year, such as one cleaning every week, so that's four times per month? Is it two times per month? Is it seasonal? And does it matter the number of locations? Other examples of revenue streams might be a subscription or membership fee, an online product sales. So if you wanted to sell, if you wanted to be a distributor for some of your suppliers, you could have an online store on your website. Um, and that's where the affiliate marketing incentives may be able to come into play as well. Again, I'm sure you can uh, think of others. 
And here's that competition side. Um, you must never ever lose sight of your competition. You have to understand how you can continually differentiate your business because it's a continuous process of research, adjusting, and communicating. What can you do better, cheaper, and faster that helps your customers do what they do better, cheaper, and faster? This is where your unique selling proposition comes into place. Again, what problem are you solving? And how do you solve it better, cheaper, and faster than your competition? There's different types of competition. There's direct, which means that cleaning service does the exact same service as you in the exact same geographic area. Indirect competition might mean cleaning machine rentals, home carpet cleaners, or big box store supplies and tools. Analyzing and responding to your competition is a subject all by itself that we could do a whole other workshop on. But you can start with the following. So your unique selling proposition must be quantifiable, not claimed by the competition, not be a cliche and be objective and not subjective. These simple guidelines will help you establish and communicate how you do what you do better, cheaper, or faster than anyone else. I wanted to share with you how one of my clients applied this model to developing her business concept. So she drew this out on a large cardboard sheet and used post-it notes to represent her various customer segments. She used different colors for the different customer segments, then changed, added, or removed information as she learned more about her business and answered the questions in each block. Others have also used whiteboards with colored markers. That's just one way the business model canvas can help visualize how you will operate your business to create deliver and capture that value. Now, before we get into um, a whole section on q and I also wanted to mention that there's also a mission model canvas in case any of you are involved with nonprofit organizations. If you're interested in exploring this further, please contact SCORE to request a mentor as we have several who are nonprofit specialists. But this slide, which you will receive in the um, PDF version that we will be sending out, explains a mission model canvas. It's very similar to what a regular business model canvas is, but the questions are just a little bit different. Um, they, at the end, it's customers and stakeholders. Okay, and, but at the bottom, it's income and cost structure because nonprofits can earn money, um, but so where is it coming from? What it, does it really cost to run the nonprofit? Those are things you need to think about. So it's all the same things, it's just laid out just a little bit differently. But if you have any questions, you can certainly work on it with a SCORE mentor. Do we have any questions, Kristen? Mara, yes we do. <laughs> um, okay. One of the questions was, which areas of the canvas would be more would be most different for a consulting company um, compared to a cleaning company and how? Okay, for the consulting company, there actually isn't going to be any difference. You for a consulting company, you're still going to have some partners that are going to be able to deliver some of the services for you. You're still going to have um, customer segments because it depends on what you're consulting on. Let me see if I can get back to the slide so I can talk about it a little better. Um, so for a consulting business, yeah, you still have all those key activities. Your customer relationships and your channels are going to be the same or very similar to a cleaning service business. So the, the actual topics and the questions aren't really going to change from a consulting service to a cleaning service. You just have to put on your consulting hat and think about the clients that you want to serve in your consulting capacity. Yes, one of, um, one of the other questions um, 
that was asked before the webinar um, mm -hmm. was <clears throat> how can you use this to explore ways to influence potential investors and customers um, for their company? Hmm. Way to that use a business model for that? Yeah, that is a that's a great question. And when you want to use it to influence investors uh, for your company, this is really just a starting point. You're really going to have to create a full-fledged business plan. But what the business model canvas can do for you is you can really drill down into those customer segments, your channels, your cost structure, and your revenue stream, um, and identifying your partners and uh, the key activities, but definitely your value propositions, everything on the right side of the canvas and your revenue streams, that will help you drill down and get very clear about those things. And you can take that information and put that into a business plan to help influence your investors. Your chances of you influencing an investor with just a one page business plan are relatively slim, I would think, because they like numbers and they like to read words things like that. But if you could break it down into one page and explain it to them in a conversation, that's what you're going to do. Focus on the right hand side and the cost structure and revenue streams. Thank you. And another one is because there's different facets within a business. Can you have more than one business model canvas? Great question. Absolutely. You can create a business model canvas for every product or service that you sell because not all businesses or not all services cater to the same customer segments, for example. Um, sometimes if you're a consultant or you're doing training, you might do group training and you might do individual training or coaching. If you are um, the cleaning service, you might have a business model canvas for residential customers and commercial customers. Those are very two, those are two very different segments that require different activities, different channels, you know, things like that. So absolutely, you can have more than one canvas for whatever you need to run your business. I believe that was all the questions that we, oh, got one that just popped up. Okay. Can you expand on the four things that your USP should be? Quantifiable, et cetera. Quantifiable, okay. Yeah, your unique selling proposition should be, oh, I gotta find the notes. Um, the quantifiable, and my computer is very slow. Okay, so if you want it to be quantifiable, you really need it to be um, very clear. You have to be clear about what it is you do. I will tell you that the mistake that I make when I go out to talk about my digital marketing business is I'll tell people that I help businesses create conversations that influence and impact their community. That is not very clear, right? Because you're still like, what is it that you do? Um, so now I've got to work on making that a little bit more. Quantifiable means that it can be measurable. You know, what kind of results are you going to, de to deliver? How specific um, can you be about describing your uh, problem that you solve and the customers that you want to work with? I'm still massaging mine, and it has taken me years to identify my target market, because mainly because I didn't know about this business model canvas, quite honestly. And it's one of my favorite tools. So I am working with that, and I've realized that I like to work with business owners who like to do things differently. So that's part of my unique selling proposition because I work with business owners that do things differently. I create conversations and content, or conversations through content creation for social media. And I do all of this based on research and my client's goals. So I'm gonna take your business goals and I'm gonna translate that into content that will influence and impact your customer segments and bring you results in sales, increased sales and in customers. Okay, so as you can see, I still have a lot of work to do. But that unique selling proposition 
most digital marketing companies are not talking about conversations. It's not very quantifiable because I'm not putting a number to it, but it is based all around one specific thing that I do, which is creating content. Okay. So I'm not mentioning all the other avenues that we might do because my main focus is what sets me apart is the conversation and the content that I create. So that's kind of where you get into that. And then the problem that we solve is influencing and driving sales for their customer segments, each of their customer segments and creating content that specifically reaches and influences those customer segments. That's where we get, that's where I'm working on really getting to narrow that niche down and to narrow that unique selling proposition. That's what they're talking about. Know the problem that you solve and know your customers and tie it all together about how you do it better, cheaper, and faster. I believe right now, um, those are the questions we have. Does anybody have any additional questions they would ask, would like to ask? No, nope, not at this time. Okay. Like I said, we will be mailing you this presentation, emailing you the presentation. You can always uh, reach me at um, through the SCORE office. You can call 585-263-6473 and you can ask for Tamara McDuff. Um, Tammy Bennett is uh, the admin assistant there for the SBA and she will be happy to take a message and get it to me. And I'm happy to meet with anybody if anybody wants to meet for virtual coffee. You know, we can set up a time and, and pull up the Zoom and I'm happy to walk you through the business model canvas or answer any questions you might have. We do have one more question that came up. Sure. Do you have time to go over the other three parts of the USP? The other USP, oh, the other three parts. As soon as I can find them. <laughs> Let's see, let's get back to that slide so I know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. So not claimed by the competition. That is uh, the number two. So the four things about the USP are be quantifiable, not claimed by the competition, not be a cliche, and be objective, not subjective. So getting back to what um, mine might be or I, any other consultant, you could go out there and not claimed by the competition. My competition normally doesn't talk about creating content that increases influence or that increases conversation, that's driven by conversation. Okay, so my USP is not claimed by my competition. Not be a cliche. There is no cliche in my unique selling proposition. You know, I'm not using any of the um, things that are out there that I'm trying to think of a good cliche and I can't, of course, because I need one, I can't think of one. Um, and being objective. I tie my clients' business goals to their customer segments and the content that's created that's driven by conversation. All of those things go right into my unique selling proposition that any other digital marketer out there isn't really, they may do the same things, but they are not saying those same things. And because I take the conversational approach, that's what sets me apart in my content creation from the other people. Um, and it is objective. It's, it's not subjective because I'm driving results based on your business goals. So if you're a consultant in, let's say, uh, the IT field or a project management um, type field, if you were uh, quantifiable and not claimed by the competition, not a cliche and just objective, do some, say something about how you tie your client's business goals, how you help them achieve their business goals. What describes them as a perfect, as an ideal client? You know, you're going to talk about how you 
uh, delve into the project and the information that you take, how the, what is your process? And you list all of that under your unique selling proposition. And then over time, you just kind of massage it down until you get something that resembles a um, sentence or two and not just a, a bulleted list. But that's how you create it. It can't be, um, you know, it, it can't just be, oh, well, we're, we give the best customer service. Everybody gives good customer service or we want to be in business, right? And well, we don't all do it, but we all say we do, right? So that's something that's claimed by the competition. So you don't want to base your unique selling proposition solely on customer service. That's not what it is. What's not being said by a lot of competition in almost any industry is the results that you're going to give your clients. So focus on that result. That way you're keeping things customer centric. You're keeping it results based. Your competition isn't really talking about results and you're, there isn't going to be a cliche in there. And it is objective because it's something that is, you're dealing with numbers and you're dealing with facts and figures. You're dealing with goals and you're dealing with a result. If you're a project management kind of consultant, that's something that you do. And everybody out there, every business out there can do that. Focus on the results that you're going to bring by solving the problem that your clients and your ideal target are having. Is that clear? Does that clear things up a little bit? Yes, thank you for the explanations. Okay, good. If they have more questions, they can always reach out to me and I'm happy to go more specific because I don't know who asked that or what their business is. Wait, there's one more coming up. Okay. <laughs> I got all night, people. <laughs> While we're waiting for a moment, I did uh, put Tamara's email address and also a link to our website for SCORE with upcoming uh, workshops. And we'll also try to post any of these recorded webinars in there as well. So if you missed any portion of this webinar, uh, we will be posting them or distributing them as they get processed and set up. Um, mm -hmm. so the question from Benjamin was, how can you ad advise for someone who has no business experience? How can you offer advice for someone who has well, no business experience? The good news is that some of the most successful business owners out there didn't really know anything about business when they started either. So there's that. Um, the other thing is just, you know, look, lean on the experience that you had from your other jobs. Um, experience that you learned from your textbooks in school, if you're a college graduate or a high school graduate. Um, lean on your life experience. What are some of the things that you've done that you do really well? And from that is where you can build your business, create your, selling proposition because remember every business is unique because every business owner is unique that's what that's really what the differentiator is between businesses is the business owner because there's many of us doing all the same thing but because we're individuals and because each one of us are different with a different perception we're all bringing something different to the table so rely on your life experience whether it's school or a past job experience you, you, we can teach you, SCORE can teach you, colleges can teach you, the SBDC can teach you. We can teach you the skills you need to actually run your business, but you learn by doing. And what's going to make you successful is going to be your life experience. Thank you. That helps from Benjamin. Good, good. good. I'm glad. Were there any qu other questions that we can answer before we wrap this up. Thinking we're about done. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, if there's, if there are no other questions, then I hope this provided value for all of you and that it was a good um, way to spend your time this evening. I appreciate all of you coming out to hear me uh, go into detail about the business model canvas. We will send you, like I said, the PDF of this whole presentation, plus we'll send you business model canvas uh, templates 
so that you'll have them to print out for yourself. Also, uh, I would like to thank our two interpreters tonight. Yes, thank it's you. Been absolutely wonderful to Rachel and Byron. Oh, thank you, Kristen, and thank you, Rachel and Byron. <laughs> have a good night, everyone.